So HTML fundamentals, uh, this is what we are going to discuss today. My name is Ashish Kulkarni. I am based in Dallas here in Texas, United States. And in today's session, we are going to discuss and understand the basics of HTML. So HTML is a web programming language, is a web development language rather, and we are going to discuss that. And we are going to keep ourselves to uh, basics of HTML. And we are not going to go into details. We are going to make use of 30 minutes of time that's available to us. We will cover some basic stacks of HTML. And we will also have a demonstration so that we don't just discuss, we discuss and do it. So understanding HTML, let's start with what HTML stands for. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. That's the full form of HTML. It's a markup language that we use to build the web pages. So any website that you can imagine uses HTML as its language. So all the websites, the basic single page website or as big as Amazon, all are built using HTML as the foundation, as a language that structures the content on the browser. So HTML is used to structure the content on the web website. That is any information that you want to present is presented using HTML. And it's the first language that all the web developers learn without understanding HTML you won't have a good career in web development. Do you have to like manually write the HTML code nowadays? The answer is no. There are tools that are available where you just do the front ending, like you design the web page and the tools actually translate that design into HTML language. So you don't have to write the HTML code, but it is absolutely essential that you understand the HTML as a language. And this is where we are going to start uh, exploring the HTML. So you want to have a career in web development. Where do you start? You start with HTML. And this is what we are going to do tonight. So as I told you, it's the language of the web. And the purpose of the HTML is to allow us to communicate with the browser. That means uh, I, as a webmaster, I want to show a latest breaking news on let's say cnn.com so how do i present that information to users that information is rendered by browsers based on the html language that is fetched from the cnn server so that's the purpose of the html language html language is built on different tags so if you have to understand html language what you have to understand is different HTML tags. Those tags allow us to place the content appropriately on the website. It can be a simple HTML or a simple page, or it can be as beautiful page as the websites that we visit on day to day basis. The, I have taken the screenshot of Amazon and the CNN here. These websites renders the content using the HTML. But is HTML only language that is used to render the user experience? No, HTML is the basic foundation, but along with that, we use JavaScript for on-device validation, etc. And we also use CSS, uh, cascading style sheets. So these cascading style sheets help you to beautify the web page like you see here we have a beautiful image it is it has its own white box it has a title that's in bold then it has a link then a beautiful background all that is done using the css css allows us to beautify the web page here in case of cnn's example you will see that there is a main story out that has a title in bigger font followed by an image that has live updates in red background on it. That's done using CSS, but where to put that content? That all instructions are provided by HTML. 
in today's session we are going to focus only on html we are not going to discuss javascript we are not going to discuss css we are going to stick to fundamentals of html so like i told you html it it has its own tags so when you have to write the html code to build the web page you actually use different tags what are those tags i will show you with examples but here on the image that's on the right hand side you will see that there are different tags like head tag body tag a div tag then ul li a tags these are the different tags using which we build the web pages the browser does not display the tag it, the tags are behind the scene browser displays the content that is included within the tags so we want to understand what are those tags and how to include the content so that the browsers can render those content pieces on the website and it can be presented to your end user so browsers don't render the tags they use the tags to process the content and render the content for the end users so what we are going to do now is we are going to create a simple html document so we we now know what exactly the html is um, a basic overview now we are going to create a simple html document now in order to create the html document you can use the programming uh, what we call as ides uh, the development environment of your choice there are different tools available that you can use you can even use simple notepad or notepad plus plus to write the html code on on your local laptop now, what i'm going to do is since i have access to dreamweaver i'm going to use dreamweaver to create the html page so this is the blank slate. This is the blank page that I have, and I'm going to start writing the HTML code in it. So to start with, the first basic tag that we need to understand is HTML tag. So what does this tag do? Is like this defines, this provides information that this is the HTML page, and you have to render it as a HTML page. Another important thing that we have to do is when we save this document, we save it with .htm or .html extension, so that it is known to the system that yes, it's a web page. So I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it with demo.html. Now, whenever I double click on it, since the extension is HTML, my laptop knows that it's a web page and it will open it in a browser. So HTML to open a tag, it's it's included in a less than and a greater than symbol. Uh, so this is HTML and we have to close the tag also. So this is how you start the tag and to close the tag, we have to use a forward slash. So this is the end of HTML. So whatever I write in this is part of the HTML. Now, the basic tags that you should know is the head tag. And you will know that since this is a Dreamweaver software that helps people to write the code, uh, whenever I open a tag, it automatically closes that tag for me. So whatever I have to write, I am writing it in open and end of the tag so it helps me in saving my tag the time so head tag head tag is used to provide information about the web page to the browser so whatever you write in head section is not rendered and produced to the end user but it's it's the information about the page that we provide to the browser so like title what's the title of my web page so welcome to this demo that's the title of my web page where it is produced i will show you now the content that i have to write or i have to show to my end users is always included in a tag called as a body tag so whatever you write here in the body tag is produced in the browser so 
I, I, I want to just start with a simple hello world. That's if if you have worked in any other programming language, you will see that this is the common thing. The first thing that you produce in any programming language is hello world. So this is my basic, basic HTML page. Now let's go ahead and open and see what this HTML page actually looks like. So I'm going to open the hello world page that we just wrote. And now you see that this web page has produced hello world for me. The title welcome to this demo that I wrote here is now on the top of the tab. Welcome to this demo like you see Google here. So that's the title that they have used. Welcome to this demo is the title that I use. Now, I, if I have to include more than this, what I have to do now, let's slowly start building the web page. And in order to save our time, I have already written some code for our reference, which I will be introducing you to. So hello world is now now let's let's change it. Another important tag that you have to understand is the paragraph tag. If you have to include any content, any paragraph on the website, then you will use a paragraph tag. Tag, sorry. So this is like my first line that I want to write on the web page. So this is my first line of the paragraph. I open another tag. I write P one more time and I say this is the second line that I want to write. I'm going to save this page to save it. I'm going to just simply push command S or control S and it will save. Now I go back to my HTML or I go back to my browser where I open demo.html and I have to refresh the page. So when I refresh the code is captured again the code is requested again updated code is rendered and you will see that the code is updated the content is updated so what i want to do is i i want to mimic a news story i want to mimic a news story which has a title which has some content it has image and few links in it so that we understand different tags so like I told you, in order to save some time, I have already written this code. Now you will see here this this section allows me to view the code. Split the code and the design view. I can make changes to code here and the content is updated real time that I can see or I can just view in design code. I can start writing or designing web page here and dream viewer will translate my design into an HTML code. So I'm going to use the code instead of writing just to honor the time. I'm going to use this code on my web page. Now let's see the only tags that I have used are paragraph tags. Let's go back to the page and refresh it. Now you will see that I have a new story on my website. So the tags that we covered are HTML, head, title, body, paragraph. These are the tags which we have covered till now. As we discuss more tags, you will understand how HTML builds the web page. So this is the new story. Fed expects banking crisis to cause recession this year. The minute show and this is the content of the news article, but you will realize that this everything is in small. So I'm not going to beautify this page. I'm not going to make it beautiful using fancy fonts background and all that stuff time doesn't allow me to do that but what i can definitely do is i can make this part at least look like title so that we know okay this is the title of the story this is the heading of the story to do that html has allowed us heading tag which starts with h and there are like up to six levels of h tags that you can use like h1 h2 and h3 h1 is the topmost title h2 is the second level of title h3 is the third level of title etc so i'm going to use h1 tag here and i'm going to end the h1 tag too 
So I have opened the H1 tag and I have closed the H1 tag. You can see end of H1 and opening of the H1. And I'm going to save it. I will go back to my page. I'm going to refresh it. You will now see that, okay, I can visually correlate like, yes, I can relate it. This is the title of the story and this is the content of the story. Let's make few other changes like Washington. I want to make it bold. So I can just include it in the B tag. I can move the end of bold after Washington. So now, if I refresh the page, you will see that the Washington text has been changed to bold. So these are like very basics. How do you, when, when you imagine when you started learning the word, the first thing you did is like bold italics and underline. That's exactly what I'm going to start here with. So I, I'm going to use I tag for italics and U tag for underline. So bold, italic, underline, the start of it, make Washington bold, italic, underline, because this is included in between start and end of the tags. I'm gonna click on save. Let me go back and refresh the page. You will see that it has changed to bold, italic, and underline. So let's move on. Now I want to include the image in my story. Now, how do I include image in my story? How do I tell a browser to show me an image on this web page? In order to do that, we have a tag for that. So that tag is called as image tag and written as IMG. So now whenever browser reads IMG, it knows that it has to now produce an image here. But browser needs to know where that image is. So I'm going to use another attribute, SRC. So IMG is a tag, SRC, the source is an attribute of that tag, which tells the browser where is that image. So if I go to this folder where I have stored this demo.html file, in reference to this HTML file, the fade.jpg image that I want to produce is stored next to it. So I will just use here fade.jpg. The This tool is giving me recommendation. I accept it. I just hit the enter. Now image src is equal to fade.jpg. I will just stop it here for a while. I will close this tag. Now the, you will see that I'm not using any end of IMG, something like that because this is a self-closing tag. There are few tags which you don't need to close. This is a self-closing tag, so I'm just going to click on save. I will go to the browser. I will refresh, you'll realize now my story has an image also. That's good, that's exactly what I want. I want it with content, story, that's media, uh, the image, and maybe videos in future. So, Image SRC, what are the other attributes that I have? Let me put this image on top. So I'm going to cut it. I'm going to paste it somewhere here. Uh, let's see what happens. I'm going to refresh it. Okay, image went up, but this is, isn't looking good. There is a lot of white space. So I'm going to align the image. I'm going to say align is equal to left. Please align this image to the left of the content. And is the image size good? Or if I want to play with the image size also, if I have to play with image size, I can provide attributes like width, let's say 350 pixels and height as let's say 250 pixels. So this is, I'm just making up these numbers. This image is not in that proportion. So let's save it. And I'm going here, refresh. So you will see that now the image is on the left hand side and the content is next to it. You can further beautify it with CSS, but that's not the part of this discussion. Now I have image also included in my HTML page. I will take a pause here and I will recap what we have done. 
we have understood the basics of HTML, what HTML stands for, what it does. Then we created a page, HTML page from the blank. I, I literally wrote HTML tags. And then we started to build the content. We started with Hello World, and now we have developed a web page that has a breaking news story in it. Since it's a breaking news, let me go ahead and change it to, like, let me change the title. Let me change breaking news. And let's refresh. Yeah, now this is more relevant to what we are doing. So now image is also a part of this page. Okay, so now this is the story, but this is not the full story. What I want to do is I want to include links in it. Links is clickable links. Click here to go there, here, etc. So I want to include a link at the bottom that says click here to read the complete story. Now we are moving ahead to understand how to make the content clickable and navigate users from one web page to another web page. We are not only using this to send user to the actual main story, but any website, if you take here, for example, you have about store, Gmail, images. These all are links and how, how these links are built. Let's try and do something similar. Now, what is that I want to make clickable? First, write that. Read complete story here. So I'm going to have a text that says read complete story here. I will save, I will go back, I will refresh. You will see that, okay, I have read complete story here, but it's not clickable. Reason is the tag that allows us to link is called as anchor tag that starts with A. And the attribute that allows browser to understand where to send user is called hypertext, is the href. So href, where exactly we want user to send, we will put it here. We will close the A tag. Now you'll see A tag needs to be closed. I will put that closing A tag here. Now, where is the complete story? I have already the link here so that we don't have to waste our time in finding it. So I want to send users to this URL whenever users click on that text. I'm going to save it. Let's go back, refresh it. Let's see what happened. Nothing has happened. Let's debug it. What exactly happened? I will reduce the font so that I can see what exactly is happening here. Ahref with the complete. And you see here, like if I if even have like these 10 blank lines, nothing will happen because there are no instructions for browsers, browser to understand what to do with these blanks. So browser won't process these blank lines. So I'm going to click on refresh. Now you see I removed that blank space here. It has become clickable. So HTML is not, HTML tags are not case sensitive, but if you keep like unnecessary blank spaces in the tag, it will break, so you will have to debug it. Now read the complete story here. If user clicks, now you'll see that it has become like a hand clickable. I click here, I'm sending user to the CNBC where user can read the complete story. But if you realize what happened is uh, the user moved away from my website. So I want this thing to open in another tab so that user also stays on my website here. In order to do that, the attribute that we use is called as target. And we are going to put target as underscore blank. So this is what I wrote. Target is equal to underscore blank. So now we are telling browser the target of this way to click is another tab. So and if I click now, you will see that user is seeing the story. 
in another tab. So I'm not sending user away. User can still access my website here. So how I can use this function, how I can use the a click a href function to build my web page is I can use this functionality. We, we are just trying to be like how we can evolve, how we can make this web page more useful for user. Now I know that, okay, I can add links. So what else I can do with the links? I can include related stories here. I can add like, okay, show the related stories. And since that's not just a part of paragraph, I'm going to make it H3 title and I will call it related stories. And if I go and refresh here, you will see related stories. The font is big, it's bold because it's in H tag. This is heading level three. And using headings is also help in your SEO efforts. So please make sure that you understand what these headings are and how to use them. So related stories, I can add like story one here, story two and story three. I I have this already built here. I, like I said, I want to save our time. So let's go ahead and use this. Like you see here, if I select something here in the code part, this tool shows me what I have selected on the top. So this is again helping me to build the code with feature. I can change this here also. Like if I go to split, I can see the changes. If I go to design mode, I can simply see the HTML. But let's stick to code because that's what we want to understand. And this part like HTML, you see there is a blank space. There is a one tab. Then it head one more tab like a nested structure that's called as indentation. That's important so that for humans it becomes more readable for machines we don't need that but we do that for humans like now this is part of h3 i can actually move this ahead so now related stories i added again paragraph href tags the link to the story the title of the story i saved it let's refresh it now this is the related stories. You see what happening? You see what's happening here? I'm building a web page. Now that's making more sense. We started with hello world, then we started with a new story. Now we have a title, some part of new story. We allow users to read the complete story when we click on Read the complete story here, plus we are also offering related stories. Now, the part that I told you, HTML helps you to build the static websites, not the dynamic website. What is a static website? So here, if I have to change any story, any text here, I have to actually go and write the HTML code, modify the HTML code. But imagine you are webmaster of CNN.com where you publish hundreds of stories a day, you don't do this. They just put the content in a content management system, hit the publish button, and the content management system helps them produce the content for the front end. Now, I might be a guy who is interested in reading more text stories. So dynamically, the CMS will help to understand who the user is and will produce related stories that are more relevant for me. So that's done using the dynamic programming languages. So we use PHP, we use JavaScript for that. These are like one of the languages, like many other, from many other options. You use When we use HTML, CSS, JavaScript, dynamic languages like PHP with databases like MySQL, then we produce a beautiful website like this. But again, all this content is HTML. What's the font to be used? What's the alignment? Like put a text indented inside. All that is decided by CSS. If I have to see the web page, like the HTML of this page, 
I can simply right click, click on ins inspect and under the elements is what the HTML of this web page is. So if you are curious, like, okay, how a particular web page is built using HTML, in Chrome, you can right click on, right click, click on inspect and go to elements. This is how you can see your pages HTML that is used. So this HTML is sent by CNN server to the Chrome. Chrome reads through these HTML copies and produces the content that's visually appealing for us to read. So we have used the basic HTML tags like HTML, head, title. We use the body tag. Then we beautified, not literally, but we beautified it with the H1 tag, with paragraph tag. We understood how to use tag, bold, italic, underline the paragraph tag the anchor tag and we have also understood how to navigate users from one page to another page by making the content visible i also wanted to discuss the form tag with you guys but like like i wrote here this is going to be a moonshot maybe we can cover or maybe we can't but last thing that I want to cover is the list tag. So list tag is like we make list, list of groceries that we want to buy, list of things that we want to buy. These are like bullets, bullet point one, bullet point two. How to do that? So you can have a bulleted list or you can have a numbered list. I will show you how you can have a bullet list using the HTML. Now let's see, I, I, I this is like related stories just text 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 i want to use bullet against it how i can do that so in order to do that the html allows us to use a tag called as ul ul tag provides us information that it's an unstructured list uh, and the content of the list is used using the tag li so this can be apc this is like my bullet point number one, bullet point number two, so on and so forth. So I'm going to click on save and I'm going back to our web page and I will refresh it. You will see that now it has come as a bulleted list. I'm going to use the same logic, same HTML code, but I'm going to convert this into a bulleted list. Let's try. I have written this code already, like I told you, to respect the time. And we will put it here. Again, the logic is same. Open with UL tag, provide the content under the li tag. I will remove this. I'm going to click on save, control S or command S, and I'm going to click on refresh. Now you will see the related stories are shown in bullet format. We have that black bullet and the content and bullets are indented towards the right. Now this page is much better from what we started with. We started with hello world. And these are like real, clickable links like if i click here i can actually go to the real story and make use of it i will pause just i want to show you something else like how these things are used in real life the html like the emails that you get let me try to open that email index so the emails that you get these are also built using the HTML. So any emails, email that you see, whether in Gmail or Outlook, behind the scene, it's the HTML that's rendering this content. So what's the content that's producing this beautiful email? This is the 
HTML piece that's producing this beautiful email. So we have the HTML tag, head tag, these are the meta tags. Then we also have title tags not used because this is an email. We are including fonts and we have inline CSS. I'm just throwing these keywords so that when you learn about them, you know it, it, it will help you to recall. So this is the code that's written to make the web page beautiful. And then this is the actual web page. Like this is the body part. That's the part that you see in browser or in your email apps. This is the part that helps you produce the content. Like here you see H2, Ronald, your shopping cart misses you. You will see it's here. Ronald, your shopping cart misses. If I change this Ronald to Ashish, save it and refresh it. Look, it's now changed to Ashish because I'm making changes to source code. So this is how email is used. Sorry, the HTML is used to produce the emails as well. So you can produce web page, emails, the content that you see in mobile apps. That's why I'm saying that everyone says that HTML is the basic foundation of all the web. All the content that you see, all the information that you read through, go through, HTML is the basic foundation of it. And if you want to have a successful career in web development, it is important that you understand what HTML is, how to deal with HTML, how to debug the HTML. The next step would be how to bring in CSS into HTML code, how to beautify the code, how you can use JavaScript. Like you will see in many places, if you try to submit something, it will say, hey, your zip code is not right. That's the JavaScript doing it. That's doing the on-page validation. If you have a website where it says, okay, enter your username and password, it takes your username and password, you click the submit, it goes to goes back to database, validates if the combination is right or wrong, and then allows you to access the website. That's the PHP and MySQL in play. So today's purpose was to help you understand what the HTML is, how different pages like simple HTML page or email can be used. Uh, email can be built using the HTML language. So I hope this session was helpful. I will pause and I will see if you guys have any questions for me. If you have any questions, this is your time. Please feel free to ask me a question. Okay, I take silence as no. Uh, but I hope this session was pretty helpful. If yes, you can give a thumbs up. And I will stay in touch with you. Uh, I will send you all the HTML files that we used in this session, along with the email. I will send you an uh, the email in the sense the email that I show you on the screen. I will email you the content as well as the video recording so that you guys can go through it. And if, if this session you believe is going to help someone else, feel free to forward the YouTube URL to that person. Again, guys, thank you so much for joining this session. Uh, stay in touch and have a good evening. Ahead. Take care. Bye-bye.